Mr. Speaker, I've got mixed feelings um, about this bill coming before the House today. The House is an urgency, and given that it's been sitting on the order books for months, there's nothing about today or tomorrow that requires it to be passed quickly. The government uses urgency excessively, and before I get into the substance of the bill, I'd quickly like to just re mention some recent statistics compiled by my colleague Grant Robertson to bear this out. In just over two years, 17 bills have been passed without referral to a select committee compared with five or fewer in the full three years of the three previous parliaments. There are reasons to justify this from time to time, but not to this extent. One thing about the Copyright Bill is sure. It did go to select committee. There was robust debate in the select committee and throughout the community, and there's been much toing and froing on it, and the outcome is not perfect. But it is better than the legislation that was passed in 2008, with the support of both sides of the House, and Labor supports this bill. We still have reservations, and I'll be speaking about them. But I also want to say that in some ways I'm pleased that this legislation has come back before the House. It was the first issue that I took on my portfolio issue in communications and IT, and I realised pretty quickly that the rising discontent and dismay among the community, which represents new and emerging technologies and the creation and distribution of digital content, had to be addressed, and that we, parliamentarians, were mostly out of touch. If I thought I'd get a straight answer, although I think I nearly got, there was nearly one over on the other side of the House um, uh, before, I'd ask you all right now to put up your hands if you have, or if you know someone, who has illegally downloaded material. I'd like to think that many of us, as a result of the discussions that have gone on around this bill and the wider context, are now a bit more in touch with actual reality on what people are actually doing on the internet. It created a lot of interest. There were 237 submissions, including 31 supplementary submissions. In the coming years, the internet will become increasingly more essential in all of our lives. Disconnection is a disproportionate remedy for file sharing. We needed a law, but we didn't need a bad law. And this bill represents better law. I know it won't please everyone. In fact, there's parts that some submitters still oppose. And there, but there are times, Mr Speaker, when it's important to negotiate to get an outcome that is less bad than taking a high moral ground and taking a high moral stand and ending up with something that you fundamentally can't live with. Negotiation isn't a one-way street, and I'm pleased to say that my experiences in negotiating with um, the Minister Simon Power on this bill and the experience in the Commerce Select Committee have been constructive. Labor is only prepared to support this bill through its remaining stages due to a compromise that we reached with National that no New Zealander will have their internet connection suspended as a result of this bill. Labor's preferred option was to completely omit account suspension, but National's position was intractable. Account suspension remains in the bill and could theoretically be used in the future, but any minister who implements termination will have to wear the consequences. Rather than oppose it outright, we prepared to compromise to ensure that New Zealanders aren't denied access to the internet, something which so many people rely heavily on today. If the suspension penalty is used, the Commerce Minister will have to enact the clause by order in Council, putting the onus on the creative industries to prove that there is a case to terminate access and that the notice system isn't working. So let's be very clear. If it wasn't for this compromise, then the bill that would be for us today means that New Zealanders' internet accounts could have been cut off for six months. Labor would have opposed it, and it would have been bad law. So while the high moral ground might be a great place, it's not much good when you're left standing on your own and the actual world moves on around you. Labor wanted to have an impact on this bill, and we have. 
We haven't got everything that we wanted, and we haven't got everything that many in the community wanted. This is not our bill. It was originally our bill, Section 92A, and despite the good intentions to make it work, it resulted in a grand stout between the different parties, which did require a rethink, and Labor pushed for and supported that rethink. So I just want to quickly mention the SOP that's coming before the House today on Section 122MA. I know this has caused some more consternation in the industry around what appeared to be an attempt to push a guilty by accusation regime through and put the onus on the account holder to prove that they have not infringed when all the rights holder has done is file a notice of infringement. The way it appeared in the revised bill did appear to put the onus on the account holder and the words used that an infringement notice is conclusive evidence were misleading and wrong. We understood this after the industry approached us and we sought further talks with the government. They agreed to amend the clause and ensure that once a notice was received and where the copyright tribunal process was triggered, that all the account holder had to do was respond and challenge the notice. And that will trigger a reversal um, of the onus onto the rights holder to prove that an infringement has occurred. So what we've ended up with is better. It's not perfect, but it's better than many other jurisdictions. And right now, right now in the UK, implementation of their Digital Economy Act, a piece of legislation which is designed to crack down on unlawful file sharing, is being delayed by a judicial review in the High Court because of a challenge brought by internet service providers. Internet providers BT and TalkTalk Talk demanded the judicial review, arguing that the legislation was rushed through the Parliament without proper debate. They claim that the measures unnecessarily impact on users' privacy and force ISPs, that's the internet service providers, to police copyright infringement on the net. And the courts will consider whether the Act is in line with the European legislation, in particular as it relates to users' privacy and the role of internet service providers. And if the court finds in their favour, then that Act will no longer be enforceable. Thankfully... This bill before us today was worked through and compromise, albeit somewhat grudgingly, was reached. Which brings me to a reason I'm pleased that this bill is before the House today and why, if you had to choose, then the issues that are plaguing people on this bill are kind of minor in comparison to the bigger picture going on. And I refer, Mr Speaker, to the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement, a free trade agreement of sorts, currently under negotiation between New Zealand and eight other countries, including the US. It's an attack on our sovereignty, and what it currently contains in relation to intellectual property issues is truly frightening. Leaked texts of the IP chapter reveal that if it was accepted in its present form, and if New Zealand signed up, then the legislation would be chicken feed um, in comparison. And this is the next battleground for intellectual property in New Zealand and we all need to unite around it. Auckland-based IP lawyer Rick Shearer has written about this recently. He said, quote, the return of section 92A guilt on accusation, repeat infringer, termination of internet accounts, three strikes. The US wants us to effectively scrap the last three years of consultation around the replacement of section 92A and the reasonably balanced but still not perfect approach we are working towards in the copyright infringing file sharing amendment bill. Imagine you're an ISP who has had to bear the cost of gearing up for that regime, only to be told later in the year that it's Groundhog Day and that we're all going back to the Section 92A debacle. In quotes. Labor has said that the leaked text on internet intellectual property, cop copyright and parallel importing in the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations requires an emphatic rejection from the New Zealand government. The secrecy surrounding these provisions is of real concern. The leaked United States provisions are plainly not in New Zealand's interests. Mr Speaker, this is a compromise bill. We support it. We have serious reservations about suspension of internet accounts as a penalty. Thankfully, they're not going to be enacted. We are concerned about the costs of this new regime and where they will fall and who will pay. We'll keep a watching brief on the onus of proof issue raised in section 122MA 
and on the mobile technology um, being um, uh, being affected and being included in this in a few years' time. But it's a lot better than it was. And as long as termination remains unenacted, we'll support it.